Okay. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Kritika. I'm from the Science Center. Um, I'm one of the organizers of Make a Fair Singapore that's happening next week. I think a couple of people have talked about that as well. So I'm just going to share a little bit because um, last month um, I went over to Taipei to attend the Taipei Make a Fair. And, part, and um, in addition to attending the Taipei Make a Fair, I also attended FAN2, which is the Fab Lab Asia Network Conference. I'm just going to be very, very brief about some of the interesting stuff that, that kind of struck me. I, I, I tried to sort of consolidate them into some kind of a story. Let's see how that comes across. Uh, so, uh, well, the first day that we were in Taipei, um, we met up with someone called James Chen, who, who will be actually in Singapore um, next week as well. Yes. He, is, um, he is part of the Strawbees group. I think Saad talked a little bit about Strawbees. Um, I'll talk a little bit about them as well. So, um, and he was telling, okay, why don't we go down to this place called Future Ward, which is um, supposedly the largest makerspace in uh, Taipei. So um, we went down. So um, it's basically Taiwan's largest makerspace. At least that's what it says on the website, and it's really huge. And they've got facilities for almost all kinds of making. They've got the digital fabrication stuff, the 3D printing, the prototyping, the vacuum performers, the metalworking, woodworking stuff. They also have a uh, kiln and you know all the ceramics working, which I thought was kind of cool. It's actually a public space, but it's located within the universities. So they've, they've got a kind of a collaboration going on with one of the universities um, where the students get to use the facilities, but at the same time, they're also open for public. So they do things like making birthday parties and things like that. It's just kind of, yeah, interesting. Um, okay, so this is like the entrance to Future Ward. Uh, there's a bit of a container which juts out and then the, the, the makerspace itself is inside. Uh, there's a lot of space. It's huge. It's about, um, the whole space is slightly more than 1,000 square meters, and uh, it has got, um, this, this space that you're looking at over here is, is, is some kind of a, um, a workspace, a classroom space slash workspace. Uh, here are students working. Uh, like I said, they have this collaboration that, has, that they have been doing with um, Strawbees. So Strawbees is actually um, part of a design module that uh, the students were doing. So they had a design project that they were working on for Make a Fair. Um, here is a giant Ferris wheel which kind of rotated. Um, it was it was actually good because there were lots of girls, young girls, who were using tools, and that 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 was kind of nice to see because at least at the science center when we have students, it's usually the boys who use the the tools, and even and then the girls we really need to push them a little bit that you know it's fine to use a drill, but you know. Um, so here is their makerspace that they use have for metal and woodworking. I think I think it's about. I don't know, in terms of floor area, it's probably about, what, five, six times bigger than OMG, which is kind of huge. I guess they have the space they can afford for it. Another straw project, uh, straw robot. Uh, okay, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of um, what was in, in Future Ward that, that kind of was interesting. Okay, um, so in FAN2, FAN2 is essentially um, the Fab Lab Asia Networking Conference. There was a representation from Fab Labs all over Asia. And the idea was them for them to um, share the best practices, as well as to see what kind of ideas they have, what kind of community outreach they do, what kind of projects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was actually a week-long conference uh, in Taipei, uh, but uh, we only attended the last couple of days in the conference because we were doing other stuff as well. So um, some of the interesting projects. This is kind of interesting that I thought is cool. This is a, supposedly a wheelchair for dogs. And uh, this came from one of the Fab Labs in Taipei. It's called Fab Lab Dynamic. And the idea was that they actually came up with an open source design that as long as you enter the dog's height and weight, it would come up with a wheelchair that you could just make by yourself. The design would be customized for you. I haven't tried it. So this is, this is also kind of interesting. I think Cindy would like this. So the idea was that hermit crabs would... Um, we're, we're not finding shells. I guess it has to do with some of the human influence around it. And uh, they were actually nesting in top of, you know, plastics and, and yogurt containers and stuff that was littered around the beach. And these people were trying to um, 3D print homes for hermit crabs. And they were actually doing research into suitable materials that can be used to 3D print these homes. It was a pretty interesting project. Uh, these, this are a bunch of projects that kind of caught my eyes well from, um, this is from a um, fab lab that is near Pune in India. Um, 
and uh, I mean, I'm, I have an Indian origin, so I was I was very caught by these because some, it's, some something what Takasu shared earlier also kind of came into mind that when you looked at his stuff in Nepal, you noticed that some of the most of the projects had to had a lot to do with the local context, so they were actually like making customized prayer wheels and things like that. And it's the same thing in in um, this particular group because they are located in a rural area. And it's actually the oldest fab lab outside of the U.S. And I think they've been around since maybe 2001 or 2002. And uh, they come up with things like, um, you know, this, this, this project is actually an umbrella kind of a thing to collect a certain species of flower which is used for certain medicinal purposes. And then they came up with a low-cost um, incinerator for disposing sanitary napkins because of, of all the issues surrounding sanitary napkin disposal in India. This is kind of cool because Indians eat a lot of ground nuts and uh, the, the thing about ground nuts is that you actually have to shake them when you're roasting so that the ground nuts don't burn. So they came up with a, with a ground nut roaster that kind of automates the shaking process. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, so another thing, I think this is yeah pretty much my last slide already. I'm keeping with the time oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, a lot of groups actually talked about ways in which outreach is going on in Fab Labs, and that was particularly relevant to us because we're always trying to come up with new ways to get the mass, the big public, interested in making. Um, so in in Taiwan, I think they're coming up with a maker competition. It's a TV show where a bunch of makers come together and then they spend some time. It's a bit like your maker camp, but it's the whole thing is televised. And I thought it's really an interesting idea. Quite a few groups are coming up with or are already implementing um, MOOCs, um, online courses where anybody can go in, log in, and learn to make. Um, this is one from Taiwan. Of course, I think many of you might have already heard about the Fab Academy, which is uh, coming out of MIT. It's a fairly intensive course um, for serious makers. And I was actually thinking that since I'm here, whether because the um, enrollment for 2016 begins in November. And if people are interested, I think between the maker spaces in Singapore, we can pull in enough equipment so we can probably like, get together and, and enroll together and learn. So yeah, we can talk about this at some point of time. Okay, that's my last slide. That's it. <laughs>